Hi, I'm Nick Stam with uh, NVIDIA, and I'm going to show you a quick overview of our Tegra K1 processor we announced at the show here. And as you can see in this uh, die shot, we've got a whole bunch of graphics cores using our new our Kepler technology. We brought the desktop graphics of NVIDIA now down to mobile and it's very powerful and we have also our quad core Cortex A15s and a fifth uh, battery saver core. So this is a very very powerful new architecture and this chart shows that we're now in track with our desktop GeForce for mobile so this means we can have a lot more advanced graphics games that have you know great feature sets, DX11.2, OpenGL 4.4 APIs, our CUDA 6 API to do uh, computational sorts of parallel uh, processing, you know, uh, computational photography, and you know a bunch of uh, pattern matching and graphical uh, applications and and compute applications with the parallel processing power. If I can 192 cores. Uh, this is a uh, what's called an SMX unit of a Kepler architecture. So all of these cores can process graphics, uh, high performance graphics for a mobile processor. So this is sort of the, the same kind of architecture we have in the desktop. And now, what can you do? Well, Unreal Engine 4 is what you can do. So we brought Unreal Engine 4 to mobile and you'll see games in the future that can be ported, okay, that are UE4 and UE3 games down into the mobile architecture and even Tim Sweeney who is the founder of Epic said I, he didn't think this was going to happen for at least another three to four years. So that's really really cool. Okay so Unreal Engine 4 is a new engine coming out. There will be a number of games coming out. They're not out yet but they're coming. Okay Unreal Engine 3 had like 350 plus games so it's the most popular game engine. We're also working with other game engine vendors to bring more content into mobile that is currently PC based and you know or console based it'll be much easier for the developers to port and bring that to mobile bring those games to mobile because of the API support and the performance so this is sort of the quality of graphics we'll see on a mobile device today here's a living room rendered it's pretty flat looking the lighting is not that exciting uh, the textures are sort of flat and here's the kind of rendering we can see now with Tegra K1 okay and you'll see here there's all kinds of lighting um, we have what's called deferred rendering and I can show this demo to you out in the booth or in here we'll, we'll get and actually show it to you live and we'll, we'll navigate around but the textures on the couch, the floor, the lights, the reflections, the HDR lighting, um, adaptive lighting, adjust like your pupils adjust to light as you move around the environment. It's really cool and this is a UE4 based demo. Okay, And then how about performance overall versus the consoles? Well. Tegra K1, as you see in this chart, actually has more GPU horsepower and more CPU horsepower at 1 20th the power consumption of the prior gen consoles. That's pretty amazing given that we're doing this in a chip, you know, a small chip and be able to bring that level of quality, okay, to mobile gaming, to mobile devices. Now, not only do we have the 32-bit quad-core coming in devices in Q2 of 2014, we also have a dual-core 64-bit version of Tegra K1 that will come in the second half of 2014, okay? And this is using our own CPU architecture based on ARM V8 architecture, and we talked about Project Denver about three years ago at CES. Well, it's coming to products this year. Two very, very high performance cores, seven way superscalar. So we're not giving much more detail internally yet, but this is going to be a very high performance part uh, architecture and, and product, and it will be usable in uh, phones, tablets, all in ones, uh, clamshells, right up the, the ladder as both. both uh, K1 implementations will be. These are two very high performance cores. We're not giving out performance specs right now. It's too early, but we can just say that this will be the type of performance um, that does go beyond what you've seen currently in the market, of course, uh, well beyond. Uh, so we're looking forward to it later this year, and then we can do our comparisons. And of course, we have, you know, roadmap into the future, um, you know, our, our Maxwell generation and our Volta generation beyond that, so there's going to be a whole bunch of cool stuff coming down, and the Denver roadmap, you know, extends on, so it's going to be pretty neat stuff. 
the, the performance and capabilities we bring to, to mobile are going to be quite amazing. And not to mention just the computing side, you know, phones and tablets and, and um, PCs, laptops, or, or sorry, clamshell devices, all-in-ones, but also automobiles. So you're going to see more and more complex systems in infotainment, in navigation, uh, in instrument clusters and customizable instrument clusters, just a lot more tech coming to your car. And we have a K1 module, Tegra K1 uh, VCM, we call it, module, visual computing module that is usable in the, in the autos. And we've got the Audi and BMW we're showing on the show floor today. Um, and there's many other vehicles we're in uh, that uh, have Tegra or you know, NVIDIA technology, um, Tesla, you're familiar with Tesla, the electric vehicle. We're in VW. Um, we're in a lot of high-end cars too. I Lamborghini and Bentley. I wish I had those. But uh, so there's a lot of uh, great stuff happening in auto technology with the Tegra tech, with Tegra processors. So well into the future. Uh, no, 192 core is an overkill. There's never enough processing power for graphics. We always can use more. To get to that photorealistic rendering that people want, it just requires more horsepower. Now, if you look at uh, Tegra K1, it's got great graphics for a mobile device, but then if you look at our desktop graphics, you know, they have like 2,880 cores versus 192. So we're not quite at that level in mobile yet, but the kinds of things we can do in the desktop graphics and parallel compute processing and all the things we do and supercomputer usages and all that, we're not there in mobile for a while. But people want their mobile devices to be um, as high performance as their current PCs and desktop devices, and we're moving you know, more and more horsepower into the mobile environment to do that. Much better graphics and gaming and uh, uses in the automobile, uh, just a whole bunch of things we can do uh, that we can still take advantage of. We need to add more horsepower to mobile, and K1 is going to bring a lot more than the users have, have ever seen before in 2014, so it's going to be cool.